People put up with me because very simple. There is never, ever, that they didn't see me working as hard as the, them or harder than them. It's not my investment. I play devil's advocate with Emad. I never thought that we would be in the heart of the worst of it. In Vancouver, BC, there is money to burn. Lotus Land is now a glitzed up, jacked up playground for the rich and want to be rich. Absolutely, tons of money in Vancouver. I don't know where it's coming from. I, I sometimes I feel like it's nobody's working because they're all out and they're all partying. Imad Yakub is a self-made man. He came to Canada 25 years ago from Egypt and quickly rose from dishwasher to chef. He is now the trend-setting restaurateur in Vancouver. He's very intense. And he's a yeller and a screamer. And he's got a lot of passion and, and at times, a lot of hostility. And I don't like it. Imad's empire includes Coast for fine dining and Global, a satay lounge nightclub. They are both in fashionable Yale town and both jammed every night. It seems that every time he opens a restaurant, it's, it's exactly what Vancouver needs. Imad, who was educated in Egypt as an accountant, wants to expand his empire. He has an idea. Just four blocks from his other restaurants, four blocks from where all the big bucks are being spent, is Granville Street. This was once the main drag in Vancouver, but in the 70s, when an underground mall was built nearby, the street went bust. If you want a blow-up doll, if you're a panhandler, if you're out on a scuzzy date, that's where you go. But Vancouver will soon host the Olympics, and the smart money is betting Granville Street will be back. Imad has just signed an unbelievably cheap 20-year lease here for Vancouver's most fabulous new spot. Anybody and everybody gonna come into Granville Street, they're gonna pay more than me now because uh, I guess they took us as an anchor, and that's the important thing we're looking for. It's quite high ceiling, so I think that's gonna be a challenge. Imad never travels alone. His gang of four includes Sean, his corporate chef, Peter, his nephew and PR guy, Jack, his director of operations, and Patrick, who started as a bartender and will be the general manager of Sanafir. They have all invested in Sanafir. They are all fiercely loyal to Imad. Imad's taught me everything I know. He's taught me how to talk to people. He's taught me how to make the deal happen. He's taught me how to carry myself. He's taught, he's taught me uh, how to make the most of what I can be. Patrick has cashed in all his savings and mortgaged his house to be a partner in Sanafir. I'm on the, the verge of success. Uh, if if uh, we do well, if we have sales, if we knock the ball out of the park, then I th think I can write my own ticket. It is a cavernous, open space in a crummy neighborhood. On a total budget of $850,000, it's an all or nothing gamble. If Santa Fe doesn't work, um, I lose everything. Imad's head is filled with images from the Silk Roads. The restaurant takes its name from the ancient Red Sea port called Sanafir on Egypt's Sinai Peninsula. That area, it was a desert, uh, lots of mountain. Technically, if you go back to the Bible, this is where Moses got the Ten Commandments. You see how people are sitting on the floors or sitting on the banquettes, right? Uh, sitting on the floors right now. I'd like to get that feeling with the big pillows and the colors of the Moroccans, of the Casablanca feeling to it. You're gonna say is, I wanna feel good tonight, I'm going to Santa Fe. It's fresh, it's something very, very fresh for Vancouver, so I'm crossing my finger. Santa Fe was at the crossroads of three civilizations. Under his direction, 
Imad's chefs are developing a menu to seduce those hungry for pleasure. The whole idea, if you come into the restaurant and say, I'm going to have the chicken dish. Well, guess what? This is what you're going to get. You're going to a little bit chicken Mediterranean style, a little bit, a little bit of an, an Indian style, a little bit of a Thai, Thai style. So great in theory if you're a foodie and if you love all these different flavors, but for anybody who's picky in particular about what they want to eat or they don't like this or they'd rather have that, uh, people are going to want to substitute. Imad and Patrick can't see eye to eye about the food concept. It's very dear to my, uh, to my heart and uh, hopefully it's going to work. I've been fighting this one from the start and I think it's going to be a nightmare. There's needles, drug containers, condoms. I'm worried about my investment. I'm worried about who's going to break it in the back. This is, this is scary. These people are desperate. In Vancouver, Imad Yakub is gambling on a very unlikely spot for his new restaurant to be called Sanafir. If you're out on a scuzzy date, that's where you go. Hopefully it's going to work. I keep thinking that I'm in like a thousand years ago in uh, Alibaba's. Today, David Nikolai, Imad's designer, has a headache because Imad wants a mezzanine with beds. The bed again, sorry guys, the bed again. What's the material on the bed? The curtains can individually wrap each bed. They'll have okay. high ceilings. Yeah. What's the material on the beds? We want it to, to feel comfortable. So I think Egyptian cottons and things like that. Just things that are going to be more, you it's know all what? maintenance. Okay, I, but I got in, I got in a, a conversation with my lovely wife uh, yeah. yesterday about this where she, she's, she technically said, this is going to be a suicide. I, I play devil's advocate with Imad. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're just talking about you, baby. Hi. We're talking oh, about yeah. the beds, and he's oh. talking about Egyptian cotton, the conversation we had yesterday. Let's say you've got two, three spills a night. Is it yeah. going to be OK, everybody up? We have to change the linen? Because if I'm, I'm not going to sit on a wet sheet. Right. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like Shannon will come in, and she'll drop the hammer and say, no, this is unacceptable. Well, like, I guess we can't control it. the whole concept of the beds in general. No, 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 no. I like no, the no, bed. No, 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 the bed, I need no, to no. do the bed. I like right. the to. bed. So but I think, I think either way, something like Can we get back to this for a second? The only problem is, is that uh, we don't always go to her first. We often go to her last. OK, this is maybe a compromise. If the bed can be in that chocolate vinyl that's what we're gonna with do. the sheet on top. Oh, that's what we're so that way, if the sheet doesn't work that's after fine. a little bit, yeah. we'll make sure it's a nice vinyl underneath, okay. and then you can blow out the sheet. And we'll tell and David. We'll, uh, we'll, 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 we'll be tell. with the vinyl. OK. Don't worry. Okay. We'll be okay. with the vinyl. OK. OK, come well, on. Okay. Yeah, we go. Okay. Bye. Okay. See you later. Bye. The beds and any of the design questions they can fix, the neighborhood, they can't. It's worse than anyone expected. There's needles, drug containers, condoms. Like, what is this? Like, these are pills. People have been doing every kind of drug you can imagine. I mean, this is just disgusting. I knew that this was out there. I knew it was a problem we were going to have, but I I never thought that we would be in the heart of the worst of it. I'm worried about my investment. I'm worried about who's going to break in the back of, uh, uh, and from the back door. I have over $100,000 tied up in Santa Fe. You know, it's, it's not my investment. This is, this is scary. These people are desperate. And, and it's the, the worst side of life. And it's right out back of our door. For the last three weeks, Imad and Shannon have been on vacation. In their absence, a lot of work has been done. The tiles are in, and that was a major issue. That was something that Imad really wanted to have done. They're in, which is great. They're just the wrong color. He's going to scream and yell, and, and Hurricane Imad, it's going to be crazy. That's not the color we had? Well, it's the general color, but... What does that mean, general color? That's not the color we... This is not what we... It came from the same mountain in China. You can see it's more or less the same. It, but no, this is a coffee brown, and this one, it's more like a brown. Like, a, this is a dark blackish in it. Well, 
We've got over 950 square feet of it on the wall, so it's not coming off now. But <laughs> it looked a lot reddish than this. And we can't get so this we're not anymore. Even... No, it's the big slab that came from China. So what are you doing? What's the well, solution? Well, we can't do nothing about it uh, because it took six months to get it. But no. like, it's is a this darker. a huge change? The problem is that the whole place started turning brownish. There's always another way to get things for less money, and it's when you go do it yourself. This is my budget. I can't get out of it. So I have to find a solution. That's, that's everybody put every penny on it. Yeah, you're, you're, you're shaking your head. No, it's... I was talking to Shannon down there. In Vancouver, Hurricane Imad Yacoub is gambling with not just his money, but other people's on a new restaurant in one of Vancouver's worst neighborhoods. I'm worried about my investment. I'm worried about who's going to break in the back door. If Sanifir doesn't work, it could be all over for him. No one will support him. No one will partner him. No one will support him. Uh, the restaurants will never happen for him in Vancouver. He'll have to move to T Calgary. He'll have to move to Toronto. Stand on the there are four days before opening night. As his team adds the finishing touches, That's awesome. Imad gets more and more obsessive. Um, you know what? This is absolutely... David, David and he's got them lights. I could got the same light exactly, copy carbon of that light for at least eighths of the price from Egypt. No one likes I told you so, and he's got a million in his pocket, so... It is exactly like if I got it's, it from Cairo. It's, it's great. He didn't mean you didn't that. see it. I know, but he didn't yeah, mean you didn't see that in the markets in Cairo. Yeah, of course I've seen them. But what are you going to do, right? I see greed. That's all what's about. I see greed. I see people. The, the booming of Vancouver and the Olympics are making individual to be extremely greedy. Lee! It is a matter of principle and a necessity that Emad stays on budget. I went yesterday after I saw this and I bought a whole stack of white oak. What do you spend on that, that material? Oh, 3,000. I made about three grand. Okay, so 3,800 bucks. Oh, well, so I don't understand that. So why his journalist charged me $15,000 if I jump in a car and finish, the, finish it in 15 minutes? You know the game. You know how there's always another way to get things for less money, and it's when you go do it yourself. This is my budget. I can't get out of it. So I have to find a solution. Well, my, my whole budget, that's, that's everybody put every penny on it. Yeah, you're, you're, you're shaking your head. No, it's... I was talking to Shannon down there. Just look, my, she asked something. It's OK. I was, I, honestly, I was not in this conversation. I wasn't in the budget talks. But it's in the kitchen where Emad's iron grip is tightest. For months, he's been working with his inner circle and chef Heath Cates on the menu. Tonight, there's a special preview. Patrick has assembled some beautiful young things to judge the food for Sanifir. But Imad and his wife, Shannon, will have the final say. This is the scallops. And this is chicken. chicken. Tuna spring roll. Poached tuna. Chicken stuffed with sweet yam. Salmon char char with pineapple. Baby mustard greens. I don't love this salad. Very tasty. Okay. Not very bitter. No, I think the meats themselves are really delicate. Do you like it? I think it compliments your night out. A drink, small portions. Yeah. And, and they're too dry. I think the whole experience is very sensual and sexy. Is it supposed to be like this? No, oh, honey, it needs more. It needs more dressing? Yeah. Okay. It's like it goes with the minimum minimum decor. The trendies think Chef Heath has nailed it. But Imad hasn't risen from immigrant dishwasher by being a follower. My job is to give the best of my ability all the time. It was, this is the best of our ability? No, so we're gonna have to do it again. Opening night is 24 hours away. With Santa Fe's success comes all of our future successes. This guy just opened the door again after we shut it down, me and you? In Vancouver, BC, Imad Yacoub is far from happy. The food is not up to scratch yet. They're too dry. What's more, he's struggling to keep his costs under control. I see greed. That's all what's about. I see greed. Iman's reputation is on the line here. Uh, with Santa Fe's success comes all of our future successes. 
opening night is just eight hours away, and already the day has gotten off to a bad start. You know what? This color looks stupid. Someone in the neighborhood decided to borrow the chef's bike. I, I rode my bike into work this morning and came in and you know, looked for the key to lock it up and uh, came back out and it was gone. Imad has given Patrick this spacious office under the stairs. We're hoping to be doing several million dollars a year in sales, and it's supposed to be coming out of this office. This is the, the nerve center, the brain. In his own quiet way, Patrick is freaking. Imad wanted 1,400 people to know about opening night. The occupancy limit is 120. We sent an email that can be printed, and it looks like an invitation. Say the global group announcing Senafir opening May 24th. That's it. What does that mean? It Announce means it, when you send it to people, if I got this as an email, I'd say, oh, sweet, it's open. I'm going down. Maybe because you don't get party. invited to goddamn parties. That's why when you look at it, you think it's an invitation. OK. But it doesn't say any invitation on it. Hey, <laughs> I can't what to do. I, I, so okay. what do you say? People are going to show up with this thing printed. They're going to show it up and they're showing your face. And they're going to say, look what you sent me. Hey, man, open today. Hey, man, Here. I, I'm not going to be on the door. You could deal with it. Whatever. It says your name on the bottom. Imad Yakub, right there. OK. OK. Let's, let's discuss it that when we sit together. Yeah, because we'll you know what? Later. But there is no time later. Imad has other things to fuss about. That's what you want. You know what's right? not bad? People put up with me because very simple. There is never, ever, that they didn't see me working as hard as the, them or harder than them. Without you, Matt, I'd probably still be bartending. I may even be out of the industry. I may have given up. It's three hours to opening. Imad has deliberately kept Santa Fe a mystery. No media, no writers, no restaurant insiders have seen it yet. Not long ago, a dirty movie theater stood on this same spot. An aggressive developer thought the area could make a comeback. But it took Imad and his team to see what was possible. Imad had a vision that Vancouver's most fabulous needed a hideaway as sexy as Alibaba's cave and glamorous enough for rock stars. It took six months and about $850,000 to do it. Santa Fe, like the ancient port on the Spice Road, is a timeless, exotic crossroads of cultures. It's wow, it's, it renders you like, wow, that's all you can say because it's just stunning. <laughs> Come to me with questions. Come to Peter with questions. Stay away from e with questions, okay? <laughs> the lineup begins long before the doors are to open. Everyone wants in on the action, including one of the local residents. The inner circle retreats to the beds upstairs. When the doors open, 600 people are trying to get in. This guy just opened the door again after we shut it down, me and you? They are well over capacity. The cops seem to be turning a blind eye. It's a crush to get the food out. Salmon is served in three ways. Seared coho with smoked bacon, lentils, and candied carrots. Sockeye tartare with capers, lemon zest, and baby mustard greens. And tea smoked spring salmon with lemongrass cream and lychee salsa. The second trio features kanafa wrapped tiger prawns with watercress sauce, a wild tempura roll with avocado and ginger soy sauce, and sauteed Thai prawns with almonds and cabbage. There are assorted trays, including grilled lamb chops Napoleon with eggplant and goat cheese. From the moment I walked in the door, I was uh, pretty amazed. It's not like anything I've seen in Vancouver so far. Cheers. Imad Yakub has done it again. For success.
Find more at finedliving.com. Real information for real people.